I'd like to invite uh, Albert Kuhn. Albert uh, and I, I've known Albert since he was this tall, <laughs> academically. Uh, and, uh, and Albert's a radiation oncologist and also a, uh, a, a laboratory guy. We, ha we, have, we kind of have this surgeon, medical oncologist type thing going on, and then we have the clinicians in the laboratory, and Albert actually has his foot in both camps. So he's a great clinician, great, great researcher, so I'm delighted you can come tell us about what you're going to do for neuroendocrine tumors. Okay, great. Thanks, George. So to, to get us back on time, I'm going to move pretty quickly through these slides. Mostly they're um, pictures, and um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail and, and showing very little data. But afterwards, I'll stick around. So if anyone has, has any more specific questions, I'd be happy to answer at that time. So what I'm going to uh, focus this talk on is the emergence of this new uh, radiation oncology tool that we use called stereotactic body radiotherapy, SBRT, or another uh, phrase that's been coined as stereotactic ablative radiotherapy, or SABER. So the concept here is that we can deliver high doses of uh, precisely focused radiation to treat tumors with one to two millimeters of accuracy, and sometimes even submillimeter accuracy. The advantages of the approach is that we can minimize the radiation dose to adjacent normal tissues, and radiation kills tumors. And it can kill tumors in any uh, part of the body. So we're not necessarily limited anatomically to any site. We're more limited by the sensitivity of the normal tissues to radiation. So here are the three different uh, Sabre platforms that we have here at Stanford. The one that you may have heard about is CyberKnife. This was a device that was actually invented here at Stanford. I'll show pictures of that. Um, our next generation is a machine called Trilogy, and our latest is something called TrueBeam. And I'll show you examples of all these uh, platforms. They all have their advantages and disadvantages, uh, but they all do essentially the same thing, that is deliver high-dose radiation to the tumor with a very rapid fall-off in radiation dose so that the adjacent normal tissue is minimally irradiated. So this is the picture of our, the very first linear accelerator um, that was developed here at Stanford. We call it Linear Accelerator 1, LINAC. One, uh, it's been retired and is now, uh, you can see it in the Smithsonian Institute. This, this was the very first patient ever treated at Stanford. This is, <laughs> this is the next iteration but, uh, of, of, of device, but it's analogous to this. This is the CyberKnife. It's a, a miniaturized uh, linear accelerator that's mounted on a robotic arm here, and the patient lies here, and these are the imaging um, uh, uh, plates that we use. Uh, essentially, this uh, linear accelerator can be moved in all degrees of freedom by this robot, and we take these x-rays uh, in real time and make adjustments to the tumors. Uh, many of these tumors we, tr we treat will move with respiration, and so we need to make that correction in order to obtain the accuracy necessary. So this is the first um, commercial unit that we had at Stanford. Uh, we call it CK1. Uh, this is the next one, uh, CK2. You can see it's a little bit flashier. The, the, it, it looks a little bit nicer uh, in that this uh, is a little bit smaller even yet, and this room is, is bigger. Um, the energy is similar. Uh, the dose rate is faster, and the imaging capabilities are a little bit better. So this is our um, second generation CyberKnife. This is what Trilogy looks like. It, it actually looks fairly similar too, except that in this case, the patient lies here, the head is here, the feet would be here. And this is called a gantry. So the X-rays or the, the high-energy photons are accelerated through this gantry, and they come out the head right here. And this actually rotates around the patient so that this, this table is basically in the middle of this uh, rotating platform. These things here on the side are the imaging components. And again, we use these to get the accuracy necessary. And here's our latest uh, TrueBeam. It's a very similar machine. Uh, and it, it, does, it has various different features, which I won't get into at this point. This is an example of a treatment planning scan that we do. When you come in for radiation therapy, we do uh, high-resolution CT scans and PET scans, typically. Um, this is an example of a, of a liver tumor here, circled here in orange. Um, when we just look at the CT scan alone, it's a little bit difficult to tell what's the extent of this tumor. But when we do a simultaneous PET scan and overlay it, uh, you can see that here's the highly metabolic area that we would be targeting, but in addition, there's this tongue of tissue that is also hypermetabolically active over here. So now our radiation plan is going to cover all of this area instead of just this, which we might have targeted just based on the CT scan. 
Um, tumors move when we breathe. This is a lung tumor. And what it's showing is during the course of respiration, this whitish structure here is, is the tumor. And what's being treated here is everything in green. Uh, so that this tumor is moving and we're treating at the same time. But you can see that it's a pretty large field because we have to account for all of the dimensions in which this tumor will move. Um, using a newer technique or a technique that was developed here called respiratory gating, we can treat a smaller area and only turn the beam on, which is shown here in green, when the tumor comes into the right range. So we can treat a significantly smaller amount of tissue in this manner. So if we do the calculation, we're actually reducing, so we call this the gated planned tumor volume is 118 cubic centimeters as opposed to 156 cubic centimeters if you were to account for all of the dimensions of motion. Um, I don't have a slide of this, but we are also able to track tumors. So we don't have to just treat in one particular phase of the respiratory cycle. We can actually move our robot around and treat no matter where the tumor is as well. Uh, another technique we do is to correct our 4D uh, PET scans. So here's a tumor of the liver. It's a bit hard to tell. Somewhere in this square is the tumor of highly metabolic area. You can see that there's a normal amount of background uptake in the liver. Um, but this is a, a, a image taken while the patient is breathing. If we correct for that respiratory motion, now it's pretty clear where this tumor is, and it makes it much easier to target. Uh, and this is just an example of a pancreatic tumor we treated. This was uh, with CyberKnife. This is a highly metabolic area here, shown in the crosshairs. And six weeks after treatment, the uh, metabolic activity is, is almost back to background. Okay, that's it. <laughs>